Hello, darlings. Would you like to look something like this? God, I hope not. But if so, stick around. I'm going to teach you how to do this glamorous drag king makeup. Today, we are very, very kindly supported by the beautiful people at Body Effects. This is a very well paired uh, situation because, as you're about to find out, maybe 80% of my kit is from Body Effects. I live around the corner. They let me run workshops for free. I'm a big fan. You can also uh, use the code in the description to buy some Body Effects stuff, which gives Body Effects this amazing queer makeup place some money and also gives me a tiny bit of money too. Ooh, I'm a beauty influencer now. It's all over for yous. I'm gonna start by doing what I always do to start, which is to pin down all of my hair. This shit is gold. It's texturizing powder and it turns your hair super gritty. Make it rock hard, baby, yeah. So I use like a mix of butterfly clips and bobby pins and I just crisscross them. If you're a drag performer, you know this, but to lock them in, you crisscross them over. Same with the bobby pin, you want them crossed like this. Beautiful. Big net of bobby pins, done. Now it's time for eyebrows. I do my eyebrows slightly unconventionally. In most eyebrow tutorials I've seen, they encourage you to go like um, back and forwards and use a spoolie to comb it out. Here's my extremely controversial opinion. I think spoolies add like lines, like rake lines into your um, eyebrows, which don't help it look really smooth. So I don't do that. So I literally just go back and forth a couple of times. Bam. And that's about as much as I'll need. I use like one of these teensy tiny little blenders. Ben Nye Super White. <gasps> You can buy this at Body Effects. Thanks, our friends at Body Effects. Yeah, so usually when I've seen people do this, they wait for it to dry a little bit. I don't. Um, I'm just a little bit careful when I put my first layer of powder on because when it's wet, it can like pop up. So you just like pat very gently and then you pat very hard. Beautiful. And that's the full look. Just kidding. So let's prime. This is a new purchase, which has honestly changed my life a little bit. My sister, the beautiful Pinky Promise, introduced me to it. It is like prescription anti-sweat face gel. It is not a primer. Um, it's a facial antiperspirant for our sweaty beddies. I put this on before my other primer, after my moisturizer. Cool. It feels really weird, but that means it's working. And then I just leave it for a second and then I'm gonna rub primer on top of it and it's gonna flake a little bit, but don't panic. It basically, it has this real drying effect, um, which you then mitigate with primer, but it works wonders in keeping your makeup on all night. So now my skin feels like really tacky and weird, which is perfect. I then do everyone's favorite primer trick this is just decanted Nivea aftershave balm, which does magical pore related things. See, and now that underlayer is peeling off a little bit. Aftershave balm, and then a super cheap primer. Oh, and now you've turned your face into a slip and slide. It's time for contour. Let's talk about masculine contour. So I am not a makeup expert by any means necessary. In fact, it used to be my least favorite part of doing drag. I've learned to love it more and more, largely because I have become somewhat obsessed with the science of drag king makeup. Obviously it's stage makeup. You want to make your features large and open and make your make it easier to be more expressive on stage. And drag queen makeup, it's often feminizing, right? You wanna make your things nice and wide and soft and open. We do like the beige rainbow of contour and all of these are beautiful things. When you are trying to portray flamboyant masculinity on stage, not only are you trying to do stage makeup, but you're also trying to cut in all of these harder lines to reflect like a stronger bone structure, which strikes me as this really interesting point of tension. Here's the rule that I use. It is the Henry Cavill rule of contouring. Henry Cavill, of course, perfect specimen of a man. If you look at his face, it is contoured temples, a slightly diagonal cheek contour that then like trails downwards, the squarest jaw ever with like a popped jaw out the side, heavy under lip contour 
wide chin contour you got like what drag kings call devil horns so this portion of your brow sticks out in addition to of course the brow brow doof sticks forward which means that you cut in little contours here and then like massively contoured these bits these bits very very dark also little nose divots for some reason looks very masculine lots of drag kings do it and a contoured cupid's bow but no massive lip divot this is pretty straight i'm gonna try and replicate this on my face and you can see whether you like it or not this is not the only way to do male contouring and like with any tutorial right like do whatever you want all drag kinging is valid this is also masculine contouring for stage if you're trying to look like a human man you know for for film if you're trying to look like more like a like a not flamboyant man don't do any of this you know also if you want to look like a disgusting man which many drag kings do most of this isn't going to work out great for you D do whatever you want this isn't the bible this is just one way of doing it all drag is valid. All drag kinging is valid. Let's do it. I have clown white. So I'm going to go in and contour the bits of my face that I would consider like that I want to be most prominent. Previously, I've been trying to visualize shadow. And for some reason in my brain, it just clicks to try and visualize where the light is hitting most intensely instead of where the light isn't hitting most in intensely, if that makes sense. Hi, don't I look beautiful? So these are the bits of my face that I want to be most prominent. I've also mapped out where my new eyebrow shape is gonna go. Actually, that's a little bit too high up. So it's gonna be about there. Hey, you'll also notice that I have some facial hair on my face. That's because I am a transgender gentleman. So I'm a man dressing up as a man who used to be a woman. Drag, baby. I'm the babushka doll of gender crisis. Today, I'm just gonna paint straight over it and it's gonna look fine because there are no rules and uh, gender is fake and the sun's gonna explode and I'm not gonna do this perfectly and you're just gonna deal with it. Cool, it's contour time. I'm gonna go in with my darkest color first. A lot of drag kings cut their cheeks really high up. Um, there's like a balance, right? Like you want it not too high, so you start looking um, too snatched and too feminine, but also um, high enough that you can pop your cheeks, um, your jawline forward to create that really square look. So my golden rule is that if I cut it like this little weird bit of my ear, if it's more or less here, that's my that's my golden golden space. But I mean, all good makeup, you're just trying to get to know your own face, right? And also your own preferences, like who is your character? So all my facial hair is black and black when you blend it goes gray. If you don't pay attention to anything in this tutorial, um, this is the one rule I think makes a huge difference is as a drag king, avoid cool tones like the plague. Um, so anything that's going gr uh, grayish or ashy on your face has the effect of deadening you. If you are, you know, like you're adding facial hair, you're working with a face that's smaller, you're cutting in all of these harsh lines, um, you can start looking like this Victorian beggar. You can start looking like really goblin-y. On every area on my face that I'm going to be painting black, I paint this beautiful warm brown tone underneath it so that if it smudges, it just like, it's never going to go grey it's gonna go, it's gonna have this like warm brown underneath it. To avoid the um, looking like Tiny Tim or Oliver or whatever, I highly recommend using warm tones. And then if you're doing any like harsh line on your face, adding a highlight right next to it. So those lines are like really crisp and really obvious and they don't start getting muddy. That's my pro tip. Also, in terms of warm tones, um, a lot of drag kings use like oranges and yellows as blush, as eyeshadow, as everything. Orange blush, man, changed my whole life. Highly recommend.
So what I just did when my beard and my hairline is not contour, it's like underpaint for the black I'm about to put there. Let's move to a slightly more chill color of contour. So you'll notice that I did almost none of my darkest contour color on my forehead and that's because like if you visualize like light falling on you from here while you want to cut out your brow shape so it's like you want to accentuate your divots it the shadows would be most subtle on your forehead and most intense like here here and here and maybe like just in here. I have many photos of me when I have done my devil's horns just like way too dark, like the same color as you would here, and they look alien, they look robotic, um, and you'd be surprised, you know, when photos are taken of you, um, any contour that you do up here appears so extreme. So go easy on your forehead contour. I switch to a liquid concealer to shove under my eyes. And the last stage of my underpainting is Krylon Supracolor, just like a cream face paint in orange. Uh, Cause orange is a drag king's best friend. I do my blush in a nice diagonal line. Let's review the Henry Cavill rule, shall we? So we have devil's horns, which honestly are looking a little bit too dark. I would go lighter than this and I'm gonna blend it out. I have popped forward this aspect of my brow and of course, the most important is this bit right here. Doof, you want that nice Neanderthal brow. We have hugely contoured temples. I do do a bit of a diagonal here, which isn't very masculinizing, but I feel like it looks really nice and snatched on stage. If you want true mask, go totally straight here. Straight, I know was gonna be nice and difficult for you, but I believe in you. Cheek contour, this is like classic drag king nonsense. Cut it in totally straight and then trail it downwards and also fade it downwards. I blend my dark contour first and then my light over it. So obviously I've just worked so hard to do like a really detailed underpaint. I'm not over blending, like I'm keeping it real chill. I'm trying to keep these lines nice and crispy. I or go in and do this afterwards, I add like a frown line. Sometimes drag kings add in like full dibbits in their forehead. It looks gorgeous. I just do this much and then I make my nose a little bit wonky. Um, for some reason, it strikes me as very masculine. Do a little Owen Wilson, beautiful. I might just use a beautiful Krylon angle brush and just cut this line really intensely. And so that's where my sideburn ends and I just like highlighting that as well. Oh wow, those cheeks are uneven. Everything is underpainted. All my facial hair is like outlined with a crisp white. It's time to set. If you haven't noticed my strategy already from how I do my rest of my makeup, I'm gonna use a million different colors to set uh, my face, cause then it means I'm basically done. So, super white, be nice super white, again. Clearly a very well loved product. Little fluffy blush, little fluffy blush um, from Kryolan. And then I'm just gonna go in and basically just do the whole process again set the bits of my face I want to be brightest. Boop, boop. So when I say warm brown, I mean like that one. I like that one. And then I blend it out with that one. And then like, you know, like a yellow, like I'm gonna use that to set my mid the midpoints of my face, and so I look warm, but not pink. And then my favorite is just like any old banana powder, just in the center right here. We're gonna neutral set the whole bloody thing. What's really important is to keep your powder pile separate. You gotta remember which one is your super white, and which one is your neutral set? I don't pack my um, 
foundation in with a powder puff. Maybe I've got kind of dry skin or something. Like I always find that it cracks when I do that. So I just find a good pack with a brush is enough for me. Shitty little orange blush. Down on a diagonal. Don't use too much. Nice and warm. Let's talk about Dry King eyes. There are many schools of thought. Um, I have seen Logan Licker doesn't block his brows, puts his brows where his normal brows are, and then consequently does like a really neutral round eye, and it looks great. Land Insider does what I'd call almost like oval or square eyes. They're, they're not lifted hugely, and they sort of like cap out. They look quite square. Um, and then there's a whole school of thought, which is like spiky eyes, which is what I really love. I do um, elevated Disney villain eyes with a lot of liquid liner. That's what brings me gender joy. I like looking like a Disney villain. So let's do eyebrows. If you're a little bit shaky, don't go in with liquid liner straight away. Liquid liner is scary. Map it out with dark eyeshadow first and then follow that line. I am using Body Effects liquid liner um, and this is their magic liner, which I was extremely skeptical about. It has a little bit of glue in it and you can put glitter on top of it. And insanely, it's like pitch black and it holds glitter. Um, it shouldn't work, it does. I think it's a new drag mistake to, when you block your brows, you're like, oh, so my eyebrows are gonna be higher than they are normally. And so to start like the, your whole brow, draw your whole brow like here, right? Like, boof. For stage makeup, it's really cool to have that like snatched big diagonals up, up lines in your eye. So give it a shot starting your, your new brow actually from where your OG brow starts so it can raise dramatically. Bio glitter from Body Effects, which is leaking everywhere. The shittiest brush you have. Designated glitter brush. Because it's my brows, I'm going to try and avoid the biggest bits of glitter. So that should not work. Liquid liner that holds glitter. And it does. I don't understand it. Science, baby. Great, now to fix all your fuck ups, use a Kryolan gel liquid liner. You know what annoys me is like, if you spend money on makeup, you look better. Like if you use better product, you become a better makeup artist. That really annoys me. Capitalism is stupid. Yeah, I had been trying to do this with like a combination of like clown white and white liquid lipstick. And then, who was it? I think it was Kelly Fornicate. I was like, your white lines are so crisp. How do you do that? And she's like, I just used a gel liquid liner. And I was like, a what? And then I bought it. And then I got a fancy liner brush. Thank you, Body Effects. And now I look prettier. While I've got my gel liner, I'm just gonna outline some other things on my face that need to be outlined. If, you're, if you've got a mustache, you gotta do your milk mustache around it. If you're putting any dark lines on your face, you gotta cut it with a white line so it doesn't, I don't know, it like pops it. And I do a wonky highlight on my nose. Don't know, I just like it. Now I'm just gonna touch it up with a white liquid lipstick. I love this for over, cause it dries so hard and so dry, it like covers up all brow texture. And I really want, you know, my giant white highlight to be, I, I want under my eyebrows to be like white, white. And this is just primo for that. I'm also going to do my waterline in it. Alright, now I'm going to whack a little bit of clown white. 
down as my base for my eyeshadow. Okay, so eyes are primed, ready for eyeshadow. Again, I'm just gonna stay in my yellow, orange, brown spectrum. Obviously, if you wanna tailor it to a costume, you could do like a fun, fun color eye. I'm just gonna go really, really neutral. All right, so I'm gonna start with my lightest color first and then go down to darkest. A makeup mistake across both drag kings and drag queens is not doing enough underneath your eye. So whatever color I'm shoving on top, I'm also doing a little bit of it down the bottom. All right, and now we move to an orange. If you don't have the correct brush for the job, just squish it. Also for drag kings, I feel like under eye shadow is like the one thing that pretty much always, can always read as masculine, you know, like the Disney villain, the pirate, like guy liner, specifically underneath your eye, is such a mask staple. And even like, you know, like I've highlighted my waterline, but then I'm gonna put a boatload of really dark stuff and it's still gonna read kind of mask. I think it's time for an angle brush. You know, like how I outlined my brow to, sh I was like, here's where my brow's gonna go. I've just done exactly that same thing. So when I finally do not use my glitter brush, that would be bad. Um, I'm gonna go in with some black now, but it's gonna feel less scary because I'm just following along the, with the outline I've already done. And then I just blended that the hell out. But because there's an orange base underneath it, it still looks really nice and warm and not ashy and gray. Time for a cheap man's cut crease, which involves white liquid lipstick in there. So that's about right. And then my liquid liner is gonna go over top of it. We use our body effects liner that is not the one that has glue in it. So, this is a spiky eye, right? Like all of those lines are really straight. And to me that reads as kind of villainous and masculine and not particularly feminine. How you can ruin that is by doing how YouTube teaches you how to do a cat eye, which is like a swoop with like a nice big thick triangle. Basically resist all of those urges and keep your, um, your liquid liner thin and spiky. And, or you can do whatever the hell you want. I'm not the boss of you. Um, but this is what I think looks vaguely masculine. If you are a drag king, no matter what kind of makeup you are doing, if you're a dressing up as a disgusting old man, whatever it is, maybe this is a controversial opinion. I think you need to be wearing lashes. Like it is stagecraft 101, you know, like stage lights wash you out and your eyes are your storytelling tool. You need to smash a lash on there even if it's just teensy tiny. I put these lashes on last night and they were a little bit too big. Yeah, I have, um, I would, I think I have a small pointy little face. So there's like limits. There's like a limit as to how high I can take my brows. There's like a limit as to how big and harsh I can cut my face. I also think, and all of this is just my personal preference, there's like a limit as to how big my lashes can be as well. I've definitely chucked lashes on where it's like, the lashes are wearing me, you know what I mean? So like this I would say is like the upper limit of the size of lash that I wear. You know how it's annoying when you spend money on things and you look better? Like I always got cheap lashes off the internet and you know, never bought like 301s or anything and then started using proper, proper fake lashes and they have that like beautiful, I mean they've, they actually curl, so they open up your eyes better. And then they've got that beautiful like thick band. So it actually like, you have like a bit of surface area to stick it, it just. <sighs> God, it's annoying that fancy products make you look better. 
It's so annoying. And while I'm waiting for my lashes to dry, dry, I'm gonna put a little bit of glitter on my face. The Body Effects Vintage palette has these pressed glitters. You know what I genuinely don't understand is the thing where people pack glitter into here. No one's gonna see it. You're gonna stick a lash on top of it. Um, if I bother putting glitter on my face, I always do it like up, you know? You have to wait for bloody ages. So like you wait until, so I put heaps of glue on. Um, because I want it to stick to my face really well. And then you basically wait until you start seeing it change color. Minutes and minutes and minutes. Because I'm putting so much less glue on this, I just pretty much just whack it straight on my face. I don't bother about waiting for it to dry. And that lash glue is gonna dry clear. All right, while we wait for that to dry, let's talk about facial hair. There's two schools of thought, right? Do you want really bold, crisp color? Um, do you want concentrated color on your face? Or do you want texture that resembles real hair? Uh, Land Insider does an amazing solution to this, which is laying down a block of color, usually something that coordinates with the outfit, and then layers black lines on top of it to represent facial hair. I have my, this is what I use for all of my black. I've got my favorite body effects black eyeshadow, and I'm gonna cut a black line all around the outside and then as it grow, moves more into my face, I'm gonna start adding a little bit more texture. Hey, if you're not chucking a beard on, contour in a butt chin. It's the most masculine thing. It's just beautiful. Beautiful. I am a neutral gentleman and as you can see, I have laid down brown and then I'm gonna paint black on top of it. But more or less, I do, I do block color. I just cut out big black shapes on my face. Um, I think that looks most dramatic, it looks most crisp, it looks professional, and it looks great under stage lights. Um, I have had too many photos and videos of myself where it's like, have I got a beard on? It just looks like fuzzy, it looks, um, uh, it looks washed out. I would prefer a big black, chin strap um, that looks a little bit cartoonish. Um, rather, I would prefer that over a really delicate, beautiful representation of a beard that maybe looks a little bit washed out under stage lights. And you can see that my strategy for the places where I have my own facial hair that I'm very proud of and the places that are basically nude skin, the strategy is exactly the same. I'm just gonna, where I've got here, I'm just gonna mascara over it later. It's black liner time, baby. And then we use the one that doesn't have glue in it. Tenderoni has an amazing solution to this as well. And his like, Brush strokes where he emulates a beard are enormous. Like they're the big, he uses like a giant felt pen. Duff, duff. So texture, but also really bold. Let's fucking glitter it. Ben Nye Glitter Glue, our favorite bio glitter from good old Body Effects. Yeah, if I didn't cut this highlight here, it would look like I had this loop. I love glitter beards because it like emulates the texture of hair. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't have any hair on my face right now, but suddenly it looks 3D and lustrous. Oh, we didn't talk about that. So 3D facial hair is like amazing. Like for four years, I stuck mustaches onto my face. I mean, anything 3D is just is magic, that's what you want, you want dimension. Um, I am been really enjoying painting it on 2D, whatever you do is totally valid. Drag kings are playing catch up in a lot of ways, right? Like, if you are a drag queen starting out, you can buy, if you spend like 800 bucks, you can buy a dress and a press star wig off the rack, do your makeup the way YouTube tells you, you're gonna look great, you know? But drag kinging, we're playing catch up in terms of like everything. Online resources, tips and tricks. You know, we're, we're still developing what masculine 
extravagant masculinity can look like on stage. So, firstly, apologies it's taken me so long to update the shitty makeup tutorial I had up four years ago. Um, but secondly, how amazing is it that we can now buy like drag products? We can buy chest plates, you can buy pre-made, um, you know, 3D lace wigs and uh, beard wigs and mustaches, like, that's beautiful. <sighs> that's an acceptable beard. So as you can tell, I stop all my makeup here. My, the, the color I paint my face isn't too dissimilar from my own face. I wear a lot of, you know, like if you wear a suit with a white shirt, you don't want makeup coming down your neck. Um, I wear a lot of like bondage collars and stuff. I, I don't bother. What looks amazing is some drag kings contour out their Adam's apple, which looks super hot. I just don't bother. Let's do a hairline. If you were a drag king and you were not coloring in your hairline, start and then message me once you experience the gender euphoria. It's all of these cute little details that make all the difference tiny little angle brush, I'm just following my natural hairline, which has receded since being on testosterone. It used to be here. Drugs are magic. <gasps> We're approaching being done. This is such a friggin' chonky glitter. I love it. Oh yeah. It's witchcraft. It is the work of the devil. The conservatives are right. All right, Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray because my auntie Ketamine told me to. And now we make sure our fingers are clean. We do this like beautiful glitter mix. Is this masculine? No. Is this gorgeous? Yes. Now we do a lip liner. For a mask line, no dibbit. I just keep them, keep the lips nice and straight. Body effects, number 37. Liquid lipstick. We need to darken up those edges a little bit. I've said it a million times and I will continue to say it. If you're a drag king, go orangey. So like a terracotta rusty lip. Beautiful. I'm just darkening up these corners with a bit of eyeshadow. Right. So I spent $50 on a really fancy setting spray and you know what I'm gonna do? Use hairspray anyway. Because like, look at all of this, like all of that is powder. If that, if I get sweaty and that moves and ruins my entire face, I'm just not gonna risk it. And then I've also got an enormous amount of glitter on my face. Okay, we did it, it's time for the extras. See you soon. Hi, I have a lot of jewelry on. This is, if you wanna look less masculine, wear earrings this big. I like glitter and gender as a lie. Uh, great, this is how I put a wig on. So um, this is a toupee, it's base is just at the base like most wigs are. Um, and then I just bobby pin it through this base and through the pins in my actual hair. And it holds on like an absolute champion. Uh, all of my wigs are toupees like this. I really like having my, um, <laughs> you know you're doing drag when you fuck up the shot because your hair's too big. If it hurts, you know you're doing it right. Is that just a good life lesson? If it hurts, it means it's latching into your own hair. Not being kinky, body. Okay, I'm done. Hi, this is it. This is how to look like a glittery, glamorous gentleman. Remember to use your oranges and stay away from cool toned browns. If you cut a hard line on your face, outline it with some white. Do a spiky eye or do whatever the hell you want. I'm not the boss of you. Enjoy drag kinging. Goodbye. If you liked this tutorial, 
tell Body Effects you did, and then maybe they will help me make another one. My name is Hugo Girl, I'm a drag king based in Aotearoa, New Zealand. You should follow me on the internet for more dumb gay stuff.